Hello guys, it's Shop King back once again. Shop that video. How did you eat per round 1419 came out today? And uh is around uh one o'clock. And uh Let's get right into it. The cover eight page is Mar Marcus Rosario firing the gun. Is is the world champion firing a gun? And the bear is pointed at I gotta admit this image here Marcus Rosario looks he really does look like Frieza. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. He really does look like Frieza. So you're making work with the gunpowder exploding. Just uh, this artwork is uh, magnificent. Round night 14, 19. Bring him to me. And he's still holding the gun and he's smoking. And Rosario is still looking at, at the sights. You see the bullet hole just smoking. <laughs> and the dude's like, You missed? Don't screw with me. Who are you aiming at? I'm done with you. I'm not your man anymore. I quit. And Mark is like behind you. He's like, ah, behind. And he walks past him. Not an easy target. <laughs> Not an easy target. I knew it. And we see a photo of Mishima with the bullet hole next to him. And he, wait, wait, wait. And, and he punches it with the right hand. I have to get this close. And he looks at the image. And he punches it again. And he looks at it. And he punches some more. <laughs> now that's a nicer look. The dude's like, ah, stop, you'll hurt your fist. That's your money maker. And he holds him up, put him in the wheel, Nelson, with a full Nelson. And Mark is like, hurry up and bring it to me. <laughs> you see, like, this crumpled up image of me. <laughs> I want to wreck his happiness. We'll, we'll, we'll get back to that. Wreck it. Look <laughs> at those eyes. We're going to zoom in. And you see. The place change. Happiness. And you see Kumi says to herself, mentally, happy <laughs> I want happiness for me. And we see a flashback. How long are you gonna be unhappy for? And I'm not unhappy. Every day is a good day. <laughs> I don't know about that, we should say. It did look so good to me. Kumi, you just you're a good girl, just be happy with her already. Him? Makaruchi. <laughs> no, she says Epo. <laughs> she says Epo. He retired, didn't he? He got nothing. Uh, wait, wait, he got nothing to do. He might as well pick you up. Oh well. Yeah, I'll pick you. Do you have a fever? Yeah, I'm burned up every day, and when I do, I have someone to cool me down so I don't die. But you can't be so passive. You're an adult, aren't you? And it's like, I've tried. <laughs> we went on a trip overnight with him. I got a little drunk, but still nothing happened. It's clear he doesn't find me attractive. Oh my goodness. And then Tomiko smacks her up and says, don't give up. <laughs> don't give up. Oh. Pull it aside. I die or not. I really am starting to feel like I've grown old without making any progress. But still nothing has happened. But still nothing has happened. No. Just us. I can't wait. Oh my goodness. If you listen to this image. This is, a, this is a face of a mad woman. A mad woman. This woman's ill. Someone get the medic. And someone's running with a bucket. Eh. Uh, a bucket. Uh. A cooler. A cooler full of something. It could be fish. I caught some good fish today. I'm on my way. Please wait for me. I see some firecrackers exploding. He's like, why? Fireworks? And then someone says, Mokonuchi san, sorry for calling you all the way over here. I bet we can make dinner tonight. And he puts like, I brought some great fish. Let's prepare. I'm even sure your brother would like it. Ugh. It stings. It stings bad. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh, send me. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I was reading ahead. And Epo's like, huh? he's still like, here. Yeah, I thought he'd come back tonight. And Kumi's like, no, not for a while. And Epo's like, oh, I see. I feel bad for saying it, but <laughs> that, that lets me relax. Uh, so that means tonight. Uh, tonight. <laughs> it's just the two of us. <laughs> you see the firecrackers? <laughs> I can't. Uh. <laughs> The heart beating increases. Uh, what? Uh, this is a. 
Well, it was, I, I feel like I, I've seen this before. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It was the, the Baki Hama scenario. My goodness. Someone says, the sound of fire tonight. Yes, I can hear it. There is silence. <laughs> I'm going to situate this. I'm all nervous. Fireworks. Hey, look, look. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, 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 oh. Now, what I'm about to say is, I don't know, Epo. Last time you two was left alone. You were so close, Mukunuchi. You just had to say the words. The words, Mukunuchi. The words. Before Mishima interrupted, you was about to kiss the girl. You, it, it, it's right there, Mukunuchi. Go for it. Go for it now. Take the leap. <sighs> Take the leap. My goodness. Take the leap. The leap looks like they give me bad memories. I feel like we became best friends after that. Uh, after that uh, summer. And we get a flashback to the great Takamura on the beach. Filling up on Tamiko. And she's fully. And she got the shirt unbuttoned and everything. And Ayoki just showed up. Just the great Takamura. My goodness. And Tamiko says, You can't be so passive. She's right. I may not know what the right thing is to do is. But I have to aim for half <laughs> <laughs> I can't! I can't just this move! <laughs> and then, Kubi says, let's turn off the lights. We can watch it from the window. I smell a cell up. It's pitch black. <laughs> She's like, it's so beautiful. It's Mokuriuchi! Looking like classic Epo from like the 700s. It's just like, you're so beautiful. Wait a minute. Wait, wait. Wait, wait a minute. It's a double page spread. Will the kiss finally happen? It's been over 30 years. Oh my god. I'm sorry. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it never fails. It never fails. You should have just went for it, Epo. Just go for it. <laughs> so this is what happened. Epo looks out the window, just when the kiss is initiating, and he sees... Wait, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. Maybe it's not what I think it is. Did the Makaduchi get the Death God's approval? And like, he looks out the window, right? He sees Mishima, then he's gone. And he puts like, just now I, the horror of Japan, the Grim Reaper, won't lose either, to be continued. Overall, uh, it was a solid chapter, and it gave me what I wanted last week with the whole Marcus Rosario thing, and we're just, uh, I wish we'd have got more of them, and we did. But, uh, the catch-up on a Kumi melodrama, I don't know, look, I'm a sucker for some of this stuff, man, I, I gotta admit that, right? the, the love triangle thing was hilarious to me. co influencing the, the, the Kumi, the, hey, don't be so passive, you gotta go for it. And it's like, I, it's how, yeah, yeah, Kumi's one year younger than Epo. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, how are I was Epo and I like 24, 26 around there. 25. Misha was like close to 28. Yeah. Similar to Sendo. It's like 25 should be somewhere around there. And it's Prime. He's an animal. An animal. But, uh, eh. it has been a stalemate for a long time. Long time. And Tomiko is trying to give her words of encouragement. It's just like, <laughs> there are days where I get all fed up and heated up, but at least I have someone to cool me down. Ayoki's put it in work. No! No! That's ho But then again, there was the whole incident he went to the grocery store where Miyato was working at. And boy, oh boy, just burning through the rubbers. Back to back. But, uh, I woke up side the whole Marcus Rosario thing. And how, like, the man's an animal, and he's saying, Br I'll, I'll wreck his happiness. I'll wreck it, I'll wreck it, I'll wreck it, I'll destroy it. Come on, man, don't ruin your fish, man. Uh, I don't know. I, uh, there's nothing bad, I liked what I've seen. But, uh, I'm curious about what happiness is talking about. Very right, curious. And this curiosity is not of pessimism, it's a curiosity of optimism. I am quite curious, it's just like... 
I don't know. At the current moment, could you say Misha was happy? Or well, she reminded by some type of happiness? I don't know. I don't know, huh? All I can say is, like I played that clip before, Mishima always wanted to be world champion. He always wanted the family name to be sitting in a in a better light. So, uh, eh. Eh. wreck his happiness. I don't think if he loses the fight, it doesn't mean anything. I don't know. Could be one of those uh, monstrous occurrences that's worse than a Simamora type thing. But uh, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? That's a. I don't know. It's an interesting angle to go from. It really is. I want to wreck it. I want to wreck his happiness. Now that's a nicer look. You're beating up on a photo. You mad, man? I was not out of thinking about that. Does take you back? <laughs> oh yeah, we got a picture hanging up of you with Epo inside the house. You do? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't see, did see the beat up image. Yeah, yeah. My brother looked at it to get him hot, hyped up for a fight. Half the tables have turned. Huh. That's 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 that's, uh, that's interesting. How the table really has turned. Hmm. I get to the rest of the Kumi stuff and that stuff later with the Mishima thing, but uh, now I think about it, uh, could it be Marcus Rosario's in the exact same position that Mishima once was? He is the Grim Reaper. He is this bad boy, menacing juvenile who's done time, who nobody wants. He's an outcast. He's an absolute animal. He's a monster. The difference is, before Mishima can get anywhere close to where he's gone. He had a sibling, and he was never like a, a, a monstrous type. Even someone more, it wasn't that same monstrous type of thing. He was a decent human being to a certain degree, even while he was an animal. All right, it, it, there was some type of common sense until you know he believed his teacher turned on him, and it, and it just it was just never. He was he was hey hey hey, I'm not defending everything he's done, but but he was human. But Marcus here uh, could be the worst case scenario for the both of them. What if they had no teacher? What if Mishima didn't have a little sister? What if he completely delved into all his dark impulses and instead of getting all that every time he got thrown out, he just dealt with it every, and used it to fuel his career and to fuel his motivation? What if he turned it against everybody else, became an animal, just struck out across everybody, became like a wild, vicious, rambling beast who take out his fears across the world for everything that has happened to him? And what he's going to do in the future. That's a... Uh, ah. That's, a, that's an interesting angle. We go from. Uh, uh, it's the angle. It's an angle. Because that's what it seems like. Because I found this manager who in the same chapter was about to quit. He was like, wait, wait, hey, hey, don't, don't, don't you mess with the money makers, man. Alright, we're getting bread from that. He was just... He was, he, he's just... Uh, wow, just uh, he got his, he got such a real life Don King right there, boy. But the real life, if you thought, thought Randy Boy and Ernie Gregory's manager was it? Nah, he was. I can't. Nah, nah, nah. But uh, hey, that's a very interesting angle for a villain, cause uh, he's everything Misha and Sean Moore would have been. It did not have that whole human factor, where just like they still had some ties back to humanity. They still have some type of listen because not like Misha was like some horrible person. He's just he's not perfect. And some more is like we're just pushing the pushing the uh <coughs> was, was pushing the needle forward. But even then he was still had human traits. He still sat down like a normal person. But it just it would just be the ultimate inhuman opposition. There's no redeeming qualities to this guy. There's no niceness. There's no friends. There's no human factor. There's an outright savage, infighting beast. He's an animal. Could be. Could be. I want to take his happiness. Maybe he's trying to take everything he's never had. He never really had friends. He never had a family or the world that accepted him as he was. He was always seen as a monster. And unlike others who tried to just stay by themselves, he fully deserved that develops himself into it. Envelops himself into that rage, that wrath. 
And there's only one decent person in the world that is him, and everybody else is an enemy. Everybody else is a monster. Everybody else. Mm. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? But uh, the update on the uh, the Kuma relationship and the Monkey Uchi thing is. <laughs> I don't know, I'm a sucker for this little metal drama stuff. I don't know, man. I, I don't know, this stuff is hilarious. But is there that one panel? This, this is the eyes of a mad woman right here, right? The eyes of a mad woman. Protect yourself at all times, boys. But, uh... <laughs> she invites Epil over. He got the fish. They address the retirement thing. Like, Tomiko's like, yeah, You can't be so passive. I'm gonna bring up how both of them are alone. The fireworks is going off. And potentially one of the most interesting scenes. It's not even about get ready to kiss. It's not even a flashback to like 20 years ago when Takamura <laughs> chose to fill up on Tomiko. And what's interesting thing is the fireworks goes off. They're about to kiss. It looks like an like a immediate remake of a previous panel when they did it in the kitchen. But right before. Right before, Epo looks out the window for some strange reason. Maybe it was a tingling in this Epo sense. And he sees Misha before a split second. And then he's gone. <laughs> like, that's just... I'm like, Epo's like, wait. And he says to his sister, just like, right, 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 just now. And it's cut, we don't know what he said full, it just cuts off when it ends. And is this the horror of Japan the Grim Reaper won't lose either? <sighs> I don't know, man. Was e we should be even there? <laughs> uh, was was he even there? Ugh. I will be hilarious. Like later on, he just goes for a walk and he goes to that same convenience store where Miyata's it. That would be pretty funny. I gotta admit, that'd be hilarious. Just. Quite random, quite random, just quite random. Well, that's something we're going full flesh into the whole world championship fight. I don't know, man. Uh, I'll see where it goes. I'll see where it goes. But I don't know. That's the uh, potentially that is one of the most interesting things. More than Rosario mental state is Mishibu was there and then he's gone. I don't know, man. It's something about. <laughs> it's something about. I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know. Maybe unlike the previous times, Misha would just let it go. And prefer for his sibling to be happy. I don't, I don't know. Because from one angle, right? Misha was there. He was like, oh. Well, uh, they're, they're up to doing something. I, I'll go somewhere else. Or it could be. <laughs> Some past trauma with Misha but always showing up like at the amusement park or the first time with Obakumi's house or the other times and it's just like it's like a PTSD flashback and he wasn't there at all. Either way <laughs> either way I oh, don't know it, 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 it's a nice image but it seems like it seems like hopefully they finish through with it in the next chapter that uh that the Epo Kumi relationship goes fully through this time. Yeah, they actually become like a legitimate couple. So what does does Efo career? I don't know. Let's see how things turn out. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I said before, I made a video about if Epo never comes back. How how about I feel about that? And uh, huh. as long as we get the finish answer, I wouldn't be mad. I really wouldn't. It's just the fact that all this stalling and everything is just like. Uh, if it's not going to post going to be a second, then c come on, man. Let's, let's just, let's just let's say it, damn it. Stop it. Stop. But, uh, back to Rosario thing. Uh, I don't know. One of the most interesting mind states we've ever seen throughout the entire series. Uh, the takeaway is happiness. Mmm. Because aside from the whole thing with the goal thing and how they want to live better and be able to, to do better, especially when times are dire. But, uh, eh. Ironically, the relationship goes through. They become a couple and everything. And, uh. Eh. 
Because he was pushing for Kumi to go off and go get a relationship or go, or go do something. Like, it's just a whoa, 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 whoa there, Billy, all right? You're not the only one paying rent around here. <laughs> You're not the only one flipping the bills here. Well, wait a minute here, Billy. What you, what you, yeah, can you go throw me out? You can't throw me out. When well, you going to do something with your life? Well, that was a short conversation. Oh, jeez. Uh, yeah, yeah. But it will be seeing Misha for the first time not have to worry about sibling. It will just be 100% about Mishima. Maybe it really will become the Hajime no Mishima. <laughs> oh my goodness. What, Death Murder Tyrant? Hajime no Death Murder Tyrant? That's what the kanji for his name translates to? Or could be Red Ass? Oh my goodness. I think I know it was Death and Tyrant. I don't know what the murder thing. But uh, it, it's three of those kanjis. Two out of three is so bad. But I mean, yeah, we haven't really seen Misha fight without the concern for her sister. Or using that as some type of influence to push his career forward. When the times are dark, he remembers his sibling. And I always got boxing, we can depend on. <laughs> we always got boxing. But with Kuma without the equation, and he's just worrying about himself. And this whole hell, like his whole hell chill group. And he's just like, yeah, they're all going out there true for him. And show support. And it's just, uh, yeah. Like, when I made that Rise of the Champion Mishima video, it's just, uh, it has been interesting to see the gross Mishima over the years. It really has. But, uh... Yeah. Uh, this will be the first time we've ever seen him just out there on his own. Without the concern of worry for his sibling. Anyway. Uh, uh, it'd be an interesting place you've ever seen Mishima in before, really. There's always a sister in the background, or Okumi's there. It's just like, mm. Mm. Maybe like a Miyata type situation where, sure, we know Miyata's father is there. We know his father's around. But when was the last time we seen Miyata Sr.? I cannot recall. It was just been Miyata Ichiro by himself. So maybe it'd be something like that. Who knows? That was a possibility. But, uh, I don't know. It has been a long time. And that would be an interesting mind state, similar to how before he fought Juan Garcia and the whole thing. And which we'll see his sibling happy and his happiness revolves around other people's happiness or or just uh however it's gonna be shaped up to be. At least he'll make the context of those chapters make sense. Well just well he just didn't just flip on a dime and it's just well he's getting close to his world title match and he just he'll prefer not to have the weight of caring for his sister all the time. Cause now, right on the Echipus of, of finally getting his life dream, finally being able to come world champion, and just, just people will be able to see us in a different light. He'll prefer not to continuously have, I can't say drag his sister down, but, um, to see his sister be well taken care of without him. Maybe something like that. Where it's no longer just everything's contingent on whether he succeeds or not. Or we just, I don't know, maybe it's a release of pressure. Maybe it's just seeing his sister happy. It could be me a thing, but I can't find the words I'm looking for. But, uh. Because not just, oh, just this and that. It's a particular, like, set of words in the phrase I'm looking for. But maybe something like that. Um. Or just like, uh. He's glad to see his sister be able to go off on her own life and not have to worry about him anymore. Maybe that's what the whole thing was about. So who knows? Who knows? We've already seen Mishima in the Shinobu fight. Just wait. Who? Who am I? I, I know who I am. I'm a boxer. And for some reason, I have to re have that reiterated. Now it's gonna have to be re reiterated because Marcus Rosario is gonna pull out some uh, uh, Damian Anderson type things where he punches on the arms and kneeing people. Maybe that'll be the thing. Is this? Ooh. And then hopefully, hopefully. We will be able to see the counters. Because I'm pretty sure. If we can never have a conclusion to how. Miyata versus Mishiba would have turned out. Could we at least get Miyata in his sparring training camp. That would be amazing. Miyata don't got nothing else to do. Why not? Why not? Let, let's see it happen. The Grim Reaper. And the Prince of Counters training. With some brand new anti counter techniques. It would be amazing. It would be, it would be excellent. It would be great. Mm-hmm. Alright, I don't know why. It's just, it's just that moment. Just that particular moment. Ifa looks at the window. Misha was there one moment that he's not. 
I feel like this is gonna roll into something else. And maybe <laughs> and maybe Eho finally got their relationship. I am feeling pretty old. Uh everything goes well. And then it seemed like it stopped. Mm. But, uh, uh, the tale of Mishima, the death god of Tokyo. How will it end? I don't know. Even a more entertaining cameo is some more Rihei in this training camp. But uh, it'll be amazing. Uh, it'll, it'll, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it'll be fantastic. I'll pay you that. I'll pay pay per view prices for that. It'll be amazing. Well, it all depends how George's gonna bring it. Uh, <laughs> all depends. Uh, I don't know. I, I can't really sound mad anymore if it goes into the Marcus Rosario fight, because that's what it seems like. I don't know. It's just. Uh, it's just the Juan Garcia, the Vorg, the Hoshi versus Amai, where it's just like, come on. Come, come on. At least with the Mishima fight with Juan, we got to see more technique on the Mishima, see his footwork, see him work the ropes. So it's just. Uh, I just really hope we address the counter thing and then. Uh, Misha, but we've seen every single flaw of Misha get closed up. Because I always see it's claiming we have a perfect Misha already. We just haven't seen what he would do against a counter person. So it's just, we've already seen some illegal blows or anything like that. So it's just, uh, it could just be, hey, it's, just, it's a warm like Cinder versus all those Mexican before Alf to his Martinez. We're just, hey, had to go through all these things to prepare for this guy and he wins. Who knows? From that same area, you could lose. Against something else in the meantime, but uh, who knows? Who knows? Worse than to happen for this man to be dying, but uh, yeah. 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 what happens when a man fights with no weight on his shoulders with nothing to hold him back anymore? There's no worrying about his little sister, it's just him out there, or her worrying for him and his well being. It, it would just be the meat for siblings should be able to. To a branch off into her own path of living. It'd be fresh, unknown territory. Remember that moment when Epo found out, wait, 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 you're not living with your dad anymore? No, no, wait, wait, wait. After a few disputes, I, I just chose to move out on my own. Making $22 an hour at a grocery store. What, 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 what outrageous is this? Mia over there balling. Balling. Well, overall, that's been the video. Hope you guys like, comment, subscribe. But, uh, I don't know. In the wake of the last chapter, interesting questions are brought up. I get everything I want under Marcus Rosario and how he sees Mishima. Uh, he's like, I gotta get up close to him. And how. I... Mm. Maybe it's the fans he sees. Because not like you ever seen uh, Kumi on camera. And besides from fighting Mishima, it's just. Epo is just like, I don't know. I don't see what he sees. I don't know. Then again, it's all about perspective. And everything is relative. What I can see toward Misha would be, yeah, a fairly, uh, decent guy. But what Marcus could see is everything he could have, or, from a different angle, everything he couldn't have had a chance to get by himself. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know something about that image. Those two panels with Mishiba. Uh, maybe this is the point where he declares he lives on the, by himself. Uh, it will address some Epo things though. But uh... Mm. Uh, the Death Tyrant story continues. Now uh, picture this right before we wrap this up. Mishima's win, world champion, he leads the apartment to Kumi, then what's next for the Mishima? Hmm. Maybe it's similar to the thing with talking more, who knows? Who knows? Hmm. Hmm. I really don't know. <sighs> but I've been Michelle King. Hope you, like, hope you guys like, comment, subscribe. What are your thoughts about Mishpa and Mark?